Well, good afternoon, boys and girls. Welcome back to another episode of Trap Lines and Inlines. It's a snowy, overcast kind of a day up here in the North Country today. Today is an exciting day, I tell you guys. Today we're moving out the off-grid chickens. It's about uh, minus 20, minus 15, minus 20 and snowing. And we got boxes of birds in the Ram Charger, boys. So it's looking pretty dandy here. We got some in the front too. Got shavings, feeders, everything. Got my coop all set up here. Windows are finally in. I should have had these girls out here a while ago, but the windows didn't show up till now. I got uh, my nesting boxes set up, my, my chicken coop inside the chicken coop, my warm up station there kind of deal. Everything's sealed up, ready to go here, guys. So let's get these little hens set up. I can't wait, guys. So pardon the lighting guys, but I got all my chickens brought in. Like I said, it's kind of an overcast day. I went completely overboard on the number of boxes and uh, the ventilation holes here. I was just aired on the side of caution. But here we go, I got 20 brown eyes, eyes of brown laying hens. And they're, uh, oh sorry girl. We're just setting them up here now today. I wanted them to be nice and comfy here on the way up. Hope the ride wasn't too rough there, girls. They're not sure what to think about their new housing arrangement here. They had a ton of room on the, in these boxes on the way up and uh, like I said, I wanted to play it on, a little bit on the side of caution there. So I, they, they, I didn't want to crowd them in there too bad or have any suffocate, God forbid. See two hens in a big box like this, that's plenty of room. And I got them all pretty good and tame, eh? They're kind of my little buddy. Oh, maybe not that one. Hey there, hens. You're the last two. They're sweethearts. Nice and warm they are. They're great big fluff balls. Okay, we got the whole herd out, boys. Let's get everything set up for them here. Yeah, they're not sure what to think, but they're running around pecking around. Let's get some shavings in here for them th first thing, guys. So we're gonna fill it right up with shavings and get nice good coverage here for my hens so they can keep their feet nice and warm, eh? These hens will level this stuff off here pretty quick. We'll begin the deep bedding method, so we'll we'll keep piling shavings up. Uh, when they get dirty, we'll add more and add more, and then you get a great big, great big pile of shavings. And uh, as that decomposes underneath, it actually produces heat. These are happy hens, that's for sure. Okay, we'll keep adding shavings here, guys. Okay, well that's looking pretty damn good there, guys. I've got uh, shavings put all around here inside my coop, inside the coop. And uh, also scooped into my nesting boxes, so 
The girls are happy, that's for sure. <laughs> okay, dark in here anyway, guys, but uh, I just got uh, my water set up there, hung on a uh, big spike there. There's a proper hook for those pails, but I couldn't find mine, eh? And uh, yeah, it's elevated there up off the ground a little bit to keep it out of all the muck and whatnot. Um, I use these nice heavy duty plastic pails because uh, they take longer to freeze than those little little plastic waters there, specifically designed for chickens. And uh, they don't break when they freeze. Now what I'll do here is I'll have two pails, one in the cabin, which will probably water the dog, and one in here, and I'll switch them out as they freeze, eh? So uh, that'll work just dandy, guys. Okay, so I got a steel bin here with my chicken feed in it, still in the bag, and I got a nice little scoop there. And uh, this keeps the moisture off your feed there. You see, I'll just set it there, and then uh, I got, I picked up my hanging feeder from back in my chicken farming days, and uh, just got it set there for the time being. Uh, I want to hang it from the ceiling, of course, but uh, I'm not going to have time here today to to get that done, so that'll be just fine here for overnight. Okay, these are Isa Brown laying hens. If you've ever purchased uh, brown eggs at the grocery store, there's a quite a good chance these are the hens that uh, lay them. Oh, sorry, sweetheart. Uh, they're, out of all the breeds, they are the most prolific egg layers, uh, meaning they lay the most eggs. They're a uh, sex link hybrid bird, uh, so they're really quite a hardy bird. Uh, over the years, like as a kid, I had chickens and I had about every kind of chicken you can name. And they always seem to be about the hardiest of all the breeds and they are the most efficient. I, I bought these hens on June 15th. And so they're only about three quarter size here now. They started laying start of October and it's uh, the beginning of November here now. These chickens are incredibly well adapted. Uh, it's minus 20 below here nearly today. And uh, they've been outside in an enclosed run all this time. No problem with, with uh, drafts and uh, moisture. No problem at all. And the, the key to that is the feathering they've developed. It's just absolutely magnificent how thick of feathering they have. And uh, they'll stand and puff their feathers out and they're able to trap their body heat uh, to stay warm. At night they all huddle together and stay extremely nice and warm. And uh, like I said, it's minus 20 below here and they're healthy and active, no problem. It's just like a fluffy coyote or a prairie chicken, how they grow their, their winter fur or feathers to stay warm. Chickens are all the same, but uh, some breeds are more hardy than others. So I've raised a lot of chickens in my day. I had a hell of a lot of chickens as a kid and I loved having them. And uh, I've never raised them without a uh, heat supplement. Now that I went off grid, uh, I don't have the option to heat. And uh, these are by far the healthiest chickens I've ever raised. Especially the healthiest looking. They're just great big fluff balls at the moment. You can see them running around here now. Like I said, nearly minus 20 below. And they're uh, good and happy and healthy and active. Uh, no signs of frostbite or anything. They've seen temperatures up to minus 25 with the wind chill so far, but there's a lot worse yet to come. They have seen minus 15, minus 20 since the beginning of October, or the middle of October, rather. And uh, one thing here, guys, I was talking to uh, one of my friends there on the YouTube comment section, better not mention any names, and uh, he said if he put insulation in his coop, the chickens would get too hot. Um, the thing is here, guys, it's hard to explain really how cold it gets up here in Saskatchewan, up north here. Um, I live in a very cold part of the world, uh, very cold indeed. Uh, Alberta, or shit, Saskatchewan and Manitoba are the coldest provinces, excluding the territories. Alberta gets down cold too, and but like even places like BC and Ontario, they don't see the the kind of temperatures that we do. It's just extremely cold. 
um we'll see like last year i think the coldest was minus 70 fahrenheit with the wind chill for all my american friends i think and uh we'll have months of minus we'll have cold snaps of minus 40 for a week or two it's it's damn cold eh but uh, that's what my uh, enclosed chicken coop inside the chicken coop is for. At nighttime, I'm gonna get them trained so they all go in there and they'll be able to keep that box there nice and warm. And uh, on those really cold days, they can all stay in there and huddle up as well. This chicken coop is extremely well insulated and vapor barriered and with all the shavings on the ground, they're gonna just stay fine and dandy warm. Although I, I'm I'm ready for it to succeed, but I'm also prepared for it to fail. If it gets too damn cold in here, I have the generator on backup, and I'll have a heat lamp set up in here uh, as a worst case Ontario type deal. I said these are the happiest and healthiest hens I've ever raised. You'd not believe the feathering on these. Oh, they're not gonna stand still for me. The feathering on these sweethearts. It's just, it's unbelievable. Uh, the amount of feathering and coverage they've developed uh, being outside instead of implementing uh, heat supplements. Uh, another thing about that too is if you're heating with a heat lamp or something, all that artificial light, if it's running all throughout the day then the, your, and the night, then their circadian rhythms become uh, out of whack and they, uh, they aren't on good schedule. Eh? So, uh, it's nice they go to bed here when it's dark they roost or huddle up or whatever and they're they're very well uh, They're very well patterned and cycled You can just see how nice and fluffy these hens are and how happy and content they are Despite it being nearly minus 20 below out here because I'm, I'm a long ways off grid and uh, the eggs are a constant food source so uh, I'm never going to starve out here with uh, eggs and the wild game and whatnot, so that's dandy. Uh, I am going to de be dealing with frozen eggs though, I imagine. It's just kind of inevitable uh, to have a few that freeze. But the thing is, like I said, because their circadian rhythms are so, uh, are so well cycled and uh, they tend to lay all their leg eggs first thing in the morning and then... Uh, and then uh, by noon they've pretty well got it all laid so with that being said it you can get out to them in time when they're well cycled like that and grab them before they freeze but some are still gonna freeze and i'm gonna have to and i'll just feed them to the dog you know he'll like that so i don't have a run for these chickens here this winter uh, i'm gonna build it in the spring but i, I can tell you right now they're not gonna want to go outside with the snow and the wind uh, and that's why the coop is so nice and big they got so much room to run around and be happy there and lots to entertain them with there you can see how happy and entertained they are here now especially with me and the cameras this little hen here has had um this little spot on her head no no fur there no no feathers ever since she was a check eh? i don't know what's going on there but uh so i ordered 20 that was the minimum order i figured that was enough chickens and uh, i still have all 20 and i'm damn proud of that that's for sure um you know i took really good care of them and made sure they were happy and healthy uh and i'm still going to of course you can see they're all a little bit different here too uh they all got a little different pattern or coloring to them i really need a rooster here as a custom alarm clock here at my uh, off-grid homestead here and uh to keep the hens in check there but uh one thing about it is uh, these hens are engineered to lay eggs they don't go broody uh or on very rare occasion i've never had an eyes of brown hen go broody i've had up to I've never had an Isa Brown hen go broody, um, but uh, you can't breed Isa Brown with Isa Brown and get Isa Brown because they are a sex link bird. You cannot, uh, the offspring will just not be the same. So uh, I, I probably get some different kind of chickens here too. Like I said, I got lots of room. And so I don't restrict their feed at all in the winter time. They are self fed. Uh, I don't want to be depriving them of the the calories they need to uh, To stay warm and grow their right feathering uh, So I just give them self feed. They don't eat a lot and chicken feed isn't expensive. So that's not a problem um, I don't want to be dieting them and uh, and restricting how many calories they need to be healthy in the winter time uh, 
it's also extremely important to give constant water. Uh, I'll probably be changing that water out two, three times a day. Or, um, and that's important because they need the water to metabolize the food and to produce the calories they need to, to stay warm. So they have to be watered twice a day. Yeah, look at how puffed up she is. Look at how puffed up they are. Just staying really nice and warm, but I'm getting them all put in there. Uh, but you see how nice and puffed up she is? These hens are. And she's covering her feet too to keep them warm. She's trapping her body heat to stay nice and warm, eh? So uh, it's still a little bit of light out here. Oh, the camera doesn't show it. But uh, once it gets dark, all these chickens, they become very docile. And uh, I'll put them all in there. Pen. Oh, I already got some in there. I already got some in there. Great engineering guy. Okay, so I'll wait here and then stick them all in there. Okay, they've nearly got her figured here now, guys. You can see how they're all in there nice? There's plenty of room in there, eh? But uh, they're all nice and docile in there now. I don't want to wake them up with my light. But you can literally feel the heat coming off of there. They're producing a, a ton of heat to keep that there warm and uh, they'll stay really nice in there. Once, I'm just making sure they stay in there now. Uh, most of them are pretty good. There's a couple that are a little bit buggered up there, want to come out. But as soon as they f sleep in there once and they huddle all together and they realize how warm it's going to stay inside there, they'll go to sleep there every time. So just getting them set up here. Well, it's about minus 20 something here today. Check on the chickens, this is the next day here. So you wouldn't believe it, but it's quite a bit warmer in here than it is outside. Like, uh, it, it's quite a bit better. Like, de definitely a difference of a few degrees. They're doing just great. They all slept in there last night. Not a problem. So I'll show you just how thick the fe feathering is on these hens. They're just big fluff balls, eh? And they're really happy here now. I'm just getting their water filled up here now. Uh, they laid, I got five eggs this morning, which is up there with the most amount of eggs I've gotten a day so far. Like I said, they're not in full production yet. Okay, so. Egg number six of the day. I think this is now the most eggs I've ever gotten in one day. Uh, and it's minus 20, so they're definitely healthy if they're laying. You see my dog's in here. My dog has been around nearly as long as I have. So he's seen all the chickens over the years and everything. And uh, he's really good being around them. So uh, they're having a drink of water. I just got that put in here. I still cannot believe how much warmer it is in here. Got some eggs going here from this morning on the wood stove. Talk about rewarding, guys. So anyway there, guys. Thanks for watching another episode of Trap Lines and Inlines. I hope you enjoyed this little video here. Me moving out my hands. You know, it was good to get done. I, I love having chickens. They're just the best. They, they lay delicious food source there. It's a constant food source for me. I'm never going to starve anyway. Uh, they're great to have around. They, they, they eat all the green scrap that I have at the cabin, and then uh, they produce all this uh, fertilizer here for my garden there. So it's really going to be awesome. These are happy and healthy hens for sure. It's minus 20 below. I bet you it's only minus 15 in here though. Even warmer. It's it's fantastic. But this. This structure is so well insulated, eh guys? With all 20 birds in there, uh, it's a nice size, it's a comfortable size, and they all huddle in there together, and uh, they'll be able to stay plenty warm there on any night, that's for sure. It's well lit in here too with these big windows, and they let in quite a bit of sunlight, which, which produces heat uh, to warm up the chicken coop, so that's good. You know, I'll have to get a few more birds, add a little more variety to my flock. You know, there's plenty of room here for chickens. And uh, I could put a, more, a few more in here and produce a little heat, but I don't want it overcrowded. Yeah, so what a great feeling got going here now, guys. I don't know how, in what order these videos will come out, but the wood stove's in. 
I'm gonna fry up some of these eggs here right away. Solar panels are put up, just gotta do some wiring. Insulation will take me a day, tops. And then uh, we're set for winter. The rest is just, uh, the rest uh, can be done all throughout the winter, all the work inside the cabin and whatnot. So, so things are looking pretty damn good here at the trap lines and inlines camp here in the bush bush camps looking pretty damn good guys can't tell you how happy i am right now so thanks for watching guys hope you enjoyed the video hope you like seeing my little chickens here and uh whatnot so till the next time guys should have lots of great videos coming out here shortly stay tuned